You can create AI images in your likeness with any text that you like using this AI system. I'll show you how to get more clients on scale by using this individual AI automation. I'll show you exactly how you can train this model to create images in your own likeness and then how we can use that to create unique text and everything else to help you get more clients. The images that you can generate with this guys are like nothing I've ever seen before. And we can now do all of these in your exact likeness with accurate text. The literal, the opportunities for this are nuts. So I'm gonna show you the automation that I built. This application is gonna help you get more clients, but you can use it in a million of different ways. So how does this one start? So I'm gonna give you a free Chrome extension that I built and I'll put a link down below in the description that basically means let's say you're on the internet and you find a business that you want to work with, what do you do? You, all you do is you highlight an email address and basically you hit this Chrome extension button at the top and almost like that, it sends it immediately to the scenario. This then fires a webhook that's caught by our new automation. What we do is we download the entire website page, we convert it into text. From that, we basically create a unique prompt for that particular uh, business. So for instance, what we'll say is it will understand what the website's about, it'll understand the name of the business, and then it will get you holding a sign with that business's name on it, okay? Once that happens, it then makes a request over to Flux. And what Flux is essentially gonna do, guys, is start to generate uh, those images for us. So if I come over to my dashboard now, for example, what you'll be able to see is that this is queued and this is running in the background, right? So what that's gonna do, basically, is generate four images for us of that that we can then choose from. Once that happens and once it's generated, guys, it'll then fall through into this table here. And in this table, we can look at the four images and we can basically sign up and say whether we approve it or deny it. And then when that's completed, what happens is it comes through to this, theme, this part here into Airtable and then it will create a draft with that business's email address, the unique image, and some content, meaning that you can now actually on scale send these incredible images to businesses as an incredible way to get new leads. Now I'll show you exactly how you build this entire automation step by step, including how you actually train out on your own images. I have to shout out Matt Wolf for this because I first saw his video on this and I thought it was incredible. And after following it, I really wanted to see how we could build on it to not just create them, but automate them in a way that could potentially move the needle for your business. And by the way, I know I've got a black eye, it was from Sparring a couple of days ago. Don't ask too many questions about it. My name's Jack, my YouTube channel and my school community are about a couple of things. We're about the latest AI, we're about incredible automations, but most importantly, we're about the stuff that actually works. So if you haven't already, grab that coffee and let's dive straight in. So then guys, once that's then complete, it then makes a request and it will add these images for us into our Airtable. So I come back now and that Airtable's complete and let's go down and check out what we've got here. All right, cool. So let's just open these up and see what we're dealing with. So it's given us four, and the reason I put four there, guys, is just that we can decide what we want. So let's check out number one, Leon and Company. Boom, that's number one. We can send that one. We could do this one as a number two, Leon and Company. Number three, I love that. That's a beautiful, big, beautiful smile, phenomenal smile. And number four, Leon and Company. So basically, you pick which image you want, which one do I like the best? And by the way, guys, what AI has done is picked a background image specific to that business. So if it was construction, you'd probably see a construction site. If it's like an indoor accounting firm, that's what you'd see. Come back over to number three. And then what I want you to do is come down to status and hit approved. And then guys, we come back over to the automation and then this will be running automatically from the background. They also check all the changes that have happened and any that are approved, only the ones that are approved, will then go through to create a draft email. Now guys, if this has worked, when I go through to my Gmail, I should see a draft email to that company's email address plus the image plus the text that I made. So let's head over to Gmail and check that out. And guys, I've just sent it over to my email so you can see it properly, but check this out. Hey there, you're probably wondering why the hell I sent you this, two reasons. I know you get messed up this all the time and I wanted to make you chuckle. I can totally picture us working together. And then there's a photo of me holding up Leon and company together like that. How flipping cool is that? It's so, so decent. I should also say you can either attach the image to the email or you can embed it like I did. I'll show you how to do both. But first of all, what we need to do is start by training the image on your data. I'll show you what I found when I did it uh, and follow Matt's tutorial and some little quirks I think might be valid to you. So step one is head over to this page on replicate.com, which is, which is Luca Taco's AI toolkit. Uh, and what we're gonna do first of all is click on train. Now, when we click on train, what we're gonna do is basically we need to upload some images to the files. And so guys, when you do this, you're gonna get a bunch of images that it is trained on. So I've uploaded loads of images of me. There's me flexing Ninja Warrior. There's me flexing the mirror. There's me in the mirror shot. A few things from my YouTube channel, me walking the doggos, blah, blah, blah. You get the idea. So basically I only really uploaded, what was it, like 12, 13 images. So just upload the ones that you want and yeah, just find those photos. 
And then what I want you to do is name them like this. So A underscore photo underscore of underscore your name. Now, whenever we use that name in a prompt, it will know, oh, that's referring to Jack. Okay, cool. I'll bring Jack into the photo. So get like 12 photos of you, get different varieties, different positions, whatever you want, just to get a good variety. Then once you've done that, guys, select all of them, right click, and then just put compress to turn it into a zip. And then you'll get this archives.zip. We come back. All right, cool. Once you've done that, you're basically going to drag that zip over this part of the images file to basically upload it. So for example, I come here, for instance, bring that over, drop it in, and that's your image data. Then after that, guys, come to destination, click on select a model, click on create a new model. As you can see, this Jack King image is the one I did last time. So I just say create new model. I'll call it, I don't know, let's call it Prince. One, two, three, four, five. There you go. Easy peasy, lemon squeeze. We come down, then head over to huggingface.co, create a profile, come over to the top right side there, and then you're going to come down to setting. Then once you land here, guys, scroll down to tokens, which should be somewhere on here. Access tokens, like so. And then once you land here, come down to create a token, like so. The, the, excuse me, the, the permissions that I gave it were basically all the ones, uh, the collections, interface, blah, blah, blah. That's all really cool. Token name, we'll call this one Prince once more like so, that's fine grain is cool, come down, create the token like so, and then guys, we just copy it. Then come back over guys, enter the hug and face token like so, come down, steps is a thousand, Matt recommended that in his video, I found absolutely no problem with that and it worked really well for me. I left all this stuff as default, you'll have your username, forward slash, and then whatever the repo ID is for the particular thing, right? So I come back over, this one I did previously, I just put, and you know, name this something random like, Prince, there you go, so that's your, Hugging face, something you're adding it. Then guys, what you want to do is copy this last part of the thing here. So Prince Laura, then come over to Hugging Face one more time. Come over to new model in the top right hand corner and then put the model name like so. License, you're going to put, I think you can leave that as it is. Make sure it's public, then hit create model. And then that has created a new model on Hugging Face. Then when we come back over now and we just click on create training, for instance, this should all begin to happen in the background and start to create it for us on Hugging Face. Then guys, after a couple of minutes, you'll start to get on here, two out of 1,000, three out of 1,000, and then when it hits 1,000 at 1,000, it will be complete and ready for you to use. Now, when I did this last time, it took me like 20 minutes, but essentially guys, that's the full end-to-end -end process for this part of the automation. Then guys, once this is complete, what you're gonna do is copy your repo ID here, I'm gonna use a different one, just out of respect for your time. So basically, after you've done that, you're gonna to move to this page here on Luka Taco. Again, I'll put a link down below in the button in the description, so you can just hit the button. And we're looking for Flux Dev Multi Laura, and we click on that like so. And as you can see, you've got all these things that you can configure on the left-hand side. So first thing I recommend we do now is check, and you get to see the brilliance of your automation. So I come down, output quality is 100, that's excellent. Get rid of this, get rid of this and just enter in your HF Laura like so, and then add value. And if I give it a prompt, something like, let's change the aspect ratio to 69, I would say a photo of Jack looking at the camera uh, in a, I don't know, let's just call it, um, let's just say in a an Iron Man suit with his helmet off, in fact, Let's just do Superman one more time. Uh, holding up a sign that says free tacos. Cool, all right. Number of outputs, you can specify how many like. We'll just do two and then we'll hit run for instance and then that will begin to create in the background. Now guys, I went through all the trials and tribulations of getting this into make for you because creating it on the website is one thing, but then getting it into a make scenario, but basically means all we ever do is press a button and the entire thing is automated is something else. And by the way guys, all these scenarios that you need here are all available down below in the school community. So if you ever wanna use it, all you do is come here, click on more, click on import blueprint. You choose the file, hit save, and then the entire automation will populate for you automatically there. I'm gonna show you how you build it anyway, so you can do that step by step, but if you just wanna get all the codes and just upload it, uh, all that will be available in school community down there below. So if I come back over now, let's check out what the output looks like once that's finished loading. And there's a photo of me offering free tacos. And I look very happy about the fact that I'm offering free tacos. And so next, let's start with getting you the Chrome extension that enables you just to grab an email and the URL and send this personalized outreach out there. Now, this is a trigger that I'm doing, but obviously you can do any trigger that you like and configure this 
in any way that you want. And the way that this automation works, guys, is that you just simply highlight an email address on the web page and then hit the Chrome extension button and that will trigger the entire automation. So there's many ways we can do this, but essentially I'll put the file down below for you. You can download this Chrome extension for free and just upload it. And once you've downloaded it, guys, you'll see four files. All you need to do is right click on background.js, open with, and then text edit. If you're on if you're on Windows, uh, you want to open up with a notepad, something that lets you use plain text like so. And once it's here, you'll see this code. Do you see this like um, EU2 hook thing? So what we do is we come over to make now and we begin the scenario. So what I'm going to call this one here, we're going to call this one superhero build together like so. I don't, you know what guys? Oh my goodness, where is the emoji? Let's give this one a bit of a superhero emoji, I think, right? Beautiful. All right, nice. Now let's align this. Okay, great. We click on the button. We're going to click on webhooks. I'm going to click on custom webhook triggers when a webhook receives data. Uh, we'll click on a new webhook name. So let's call this one super build together. And then we click on save. Now you've got a webhook here, right? I'm going to copy that address to the clipboard. And then I want to come back over to text edit and then just replace it like that. And then once that's done, you can click file and then you're gonna click save. And what that'll do guys, it basically now means that the Chrome extension that you have will fire to your scenario. And not to mine since you downloaded mine. <laughs> all right, cool. Then guys, all you do on Chrome, okay, is you come down, you can click on extensions and then manage extensions like so. I want you to make sure that the developer mode toggle is listed in the top right hand corner. And by the way guys, if you haven't seen my last video on AI Copilots and Chrome extensions, I'd encourage you to watch that video because it goes into a lot of detail about the power of the stuff that you can do here. Now, once you've got develop mode enabled guys, I want, I want you to do, I'm gonna remove the superhero one just so I can upload a new one with you, is come down to load unpacked. And then you'll see here, superhero 1.0, that's awesome. All I like to do guys is click on details, come down and just make sure you've got this pen to toolbar enabled. And then you should see it in the toolbar in Chrome. Now we need to check that it works properly. So then come through to run the website, find a random email, and then just hit that Chrome button in the top right. Now, once you've done that, it should say, hey, the URL and the selected text has been successfully sent. Incredible. Then we come over to our automation and you should see this beautiful green successfully determined button. What does that mean? It means that it's received the data. So then I'll run this scenario one more time. I come back over to the website and I'll run the same thing again. I'll hit the button and it says, hey, cool. It's been successfully sent. Then I come back over and if this has worked properly, guys, I should have URL and the selected text, which is an email and it has, which is pretty sweet. Cool. So what's just happened, guys, is you've got an AI copilot folder on the internet and we'll take the text and the URL of that. Now, there's a million ways that we could do this. We could just send the URL and actually use AI to go forward and scrape and bring the emails out. But I just wanted to keep this video focused on the AI image gen. I've got other videos on my channel that cover that. If you want me to go more depth on that, let me know down below. But you'll also be able to, if you wanted to, just give it a URL and it will go out and find you the email for you and we'll automate it into a mega system. It's just if I put all the components together in this video, you'd be here for two hours. And maybe that's what you want, but let me know down below. Uh, but basically that's why I've built this workaround to make it easy for you. Cool, now what do we do next? Well, look, we're gonna do three things. We're gonna download the website, we're gonna convert HTML to text, and then we're gonna use this Flux prompter here, okay? Now, basically what we're doing here is creating a consistent way of explaining um, how we want the prompt to be. So once you've had a little play around with it, I encourage you to do that in the playground, actually, and have a little fun, have a little bit of dance with it and see till you get a consistent image style that you like, and then you can replicate that on scale. I know they say an ounce and pre is worth a pound and post, okay? So look, we come back over. What's the first thing that we wanna do? Well, the first thing that I want us to do here, okay, is we're gonna go HTTP, get a file, and essentially just download the entire website like so. The next thing I wanna do, since we don't speak in HTML usually, we're gonna type in HTML to text like so. And then guys, just put, click on the data from that. And so this will get us the HTML, this will then convert it to text. And then the next thing I want you to do guys is come over and add in Claude, or you could use ChatGPT if you prefer. Um, wonderful, Claude 3.5 sonnets, fine. Max tokens, I'm gonna to put that at 4,000. Add a message, role is gonna be user, content is going to be text. And then we've got the text. Now here's a prompt that I would like you to give it. You'll receive the contents of a homepage from a prospective client. Based on this information, you must do two things. Your output must be in the following JSON format only, and I'll cover what this is in a second, and I'll put this down below in the description so you can literally just copy and paste. And all you do, guys, when you do enter this, okay, is you're just going to change. You see this bit here where it says, it's Jack, King, Jack, Laura? Just change that 
for your specific repo ID. We specified the number of outputs, which is four. We specified the aspect ratio. And then we just say, hey, replace background description and business name with the appropriate information based on the client's homepage contents. Do not include any explanations or additional text outside of this JSON structure. The output should be valid JSON that can be passed directly. And then we've got the text. And as you might believe it, guys, the text here is just a text from a text parser. And then we click OK. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So what do we do now, guys? Let's just take a recap. We're on a website. We've got the URL. We've got the email address. We've caught it in our make scenario. We've then downloaded the internet tech. We'll download the text of the web page. And we've now created a Flux prompt. So let's just rename this just so that we can keep up with everything that we've got. So Flux prompt and give that a fire emoji. Incredible. Now, the next thing that we need to do is add in uh, this business overview and then the actual request. So why have I added in a business overview? Well, I've done that just because I kind of want to let you, if you wish, um, make the email more bespoke. So we could actually make your outreach email specific about their website. We could say stuff like, hey, I see that you've got these awards and I kind of wanted to check out what it's going there. So we add on a new, uh, exactly the same process, add new one there, we call this business overview. Same thing, 4,000 tokens, user text. And we just say the lamest thing ever, which is, hey, create a 200 word summary about this business, their vibe, and what they're about. And then again, just give it the text from a text parser. We'll add that to our Airtable. So if you say, look, I, what is this business again? You can just quickly see and then be like, okay, cool. I get it. Incredible. And then guys, we've got this here. So let me build it from scratch and show what this is about, right? Uh, so we've got this URL, API replicate, post, now, if I unlink these guys, now let's build this one together. So we click on new, HTTP, and we're gonna go down to make a request, okay? So we start with the URL. Um, I'm just gonna delete this actually and just flip between the two so you can kind of get a good sense of what it is. All right, cool. So the URL is this one here. Uh, there you go, apireplicate.com v1 predictions. And we come here, beautiful. The method is gonna be post like so. And then we've got headers, so we need to add a couple of headers. The first header that we need, as you can see here, is authorization, like so. We come back over, there uh, we go, brilliant. And then guys, you're gonna need to add in a key, okay? And the key is basically this thing here that says bearer, and then this long, really weird thing. So you think, we'll do what the hell is that about? Well, where do we get this key? So your key's gonna be different than mine, okay? So all you do is you come over to replicate. I want you to come to the homepage. I believe you come here, and you go down to API tokens in the top left. Once you've done that, you'll have these different API tokens. And all you're gonna do is create token, and we'll call this one, I don't know, super, super build. And then click on create token. Awesome, and you can see super build there, guys. Copy the token, or whatever your token is. Then we come back over. You're gonna need to deposit a little bit of money into Replicate to do this. It's like, actually, I think Matt shared a link where you can get $10 off, so I'll put that link down below. Um, I don't think anyone gets any commission from it or anything, but it just, it might be 10 bucks for you, so very, very cool. So then all you do, guys, is you get rid of this and you type in your new token, which is this, and that basically will then give you the authorization to post the thing that you wanna post, all right? Awesome. Now, body type is raw. Uh, then we've got JSON application text response, which is awesome. So let me come here and I'll uh, basically change this here. Beautiful. When it come down, body type is gonna be raw. Content type is gonna be uh, JSON application. And then we've got requested content, guys. And for that, all I want you to do is just put the text response. Hold on, there we go, let me get rid of this. Is request content, text response from the Flux prompt like so. And then pass response, yes. And then you're gonna click Okay, and believe it or not guys, that is like the hardest part of the entire process done. So we wanna make sure now that this works properly. We're gonna add in a sleep module. So we come here, we're gonna go sleep. Now there's ways that we could do this, like we could just keep on checking to see if the API states has changed, but just for the basis of simplicity, I'm just gonna add a delay. When you do this, I'd, I'd make it 300 second delay because there's no pressure when you're getting it. Uh, but in reality, I'm just doing 120 for the benefit of the automation. And now we've got the sleep module, guys. We're just gonna run this module from top to bottom, okay? We're gonna click on run once like so. Let's go back over to Chrome. Let us then come and click the Chrome extension. That's been successfully sent. We come back over to our automation. Webhook's got it, got a file, HTML to text. The Flux prompt's been created. We're creating an overview with Claude, which is incredible. And now it's gonna make a request for us, which is Ace. So we'll give that a second in the background. Made the request successfully, and now it's sleeping. So we can start that scenario. And then guys, if I come back over now and I come over to my dashboard, like so, I should see it's now running and we can see in the dashboard section 
that the thing has actually been created, which is incredible. So whilst we're just giving that a second to run, I want you to add the next part of the automation. And to do that, I want you to come here, I want you to clone this, bring it here like so, and all you're gonna do, guys, is you're gonna can off that URL, okay? And then you're gonna look for URLs and the get URL like so, come down and then get rid of this requested content bit there. And then we click okay. And just to check that this works, guys, I come down to this one, I go onto output, I go onto data, I go onto URLs, and I've got this get URL suite. So I copy that, I come back, and I can right click, run this module only, and then just enter that URL in, and that will test that it works. But first, let's go over now and see if that's completed or not. So I'll refresh the page. We'll give that a beautiful second and it succeeded. So if I click on this image, it should show us something dope. Let's check out what it's done for us. Cool, Leon and company, there's me, there's me again, there's me a third time, and there's a fourth time. And so guys, you can like literally just choose which of these really cool four images that you want. I mean like how flipping cool is that? It's literally ridiculous. And I love that it kind of changed the, what the font looks like. So it's not just one particular thing. That's incredible. And um, by the way, guys, for this one, excuse me, you just want to make sure the method is get, not post. I do apologize. So if I come back here, I hit this run mo module once, I come down, I just enter that URL one more time. I click OK. And if I come down here to output, guys, I click on plus, I can pull up each of those four URLs. To this out. So I copy the fourth one and I come over and I'm like, bro, OK, show me. Let's just um, quickly check out what this looks like. I come here, I enter it in and bam, there's the image. There's the image for us, ready to rock and roll. So I get rid of that, and I come back over that, incredible. So the only thing we need to do now, guys, in this particular automation, is add it in to the Airtable. So very quickly, how do we do that? Well, we're just gonna head over to Airtable.com. Uh, you can create accounts, very cheap, very easy to do. You're gonna click on Create in the bottom left, and we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna call this one at the top right, super, Oh my, oh my goodness gracious, superhero, build together, like so, and we'll give this one a nice beautiful yellow, and of course, a beautiful image like so, phenomenal. And then I want a couple of things, one's gonna be the URL for the business, like so, that's gonna be ace, and if I can check out our last one, we've got business description, email, and then image URL, cool, all right, sounds good to me. So business description, Long text is fine. Click on insert right. And then I'm gonna call this one email. Again, just do, do me a favor and just keep a plain text. Uh, it just, there's no need for it to be an email. Then click great. Uh, and then basically after email, I think we just want the status if I'm correct. Ah, uh, no, the image URL and then the status. Okay, cool. So then guys here, we're just gonna edit field. I'm gonna call this one image URL like so. And again, just put that down for long text and then click save. Let's just open this up a little bit. Oh my gosh, image you. Now we want the, we want it to be properly, properly done. Image URL, excellent. Uh, and then status, guys, is basically how we're going to approve and disapprove things. So to do that, uh, we're going to click on status. We're going to right click. We're going to go for um, deny with an emoji, of course. We're going to go for approved with a tick, of course. Get rid of that, and then we click on save. And then finally, guys, two more modules to add. The first one's going to be uh, date, sorry, uh, excuse me. And this one's gonna be create time, like so. And then finally, it's gonna be last modify time. And then we create that one as well, incredible. Sweet, this is looking very, very, very healthy indeed. Cool, so what do we then, guys? Well, we come back to our beautiful automation, and now we're just gonna add in these different air tables. So we're gonna add a new module and type in air table. I'm gonna click on create a record, like so. Okay, we're here, we're pipping, we're popping, we're having a good time. The base is going to be superhero build together, or whatever you decide to call it, I guess. Table is gonna be table one, and we're gonna scroll down a little bit. Awesome, okay, now we've got all the beautiful bits and pieces that we can just add in. So what's the URL? The URL is all the way at the bottom on Leon and company, so that URL. Business description, we just enter the thing from the business overview. Email, we come down and that is just the selected text. Cool, and then we've got image URL. So what is that? Well, that is the output from, I believe it's this one here at the top. So come down to URLs, 
Uh, no, that's not correct. It's down to output and it's down to this. Now, all you do guys here, okay, is come left, hit one, copy that, okay? And then what I want to do is click, okay. And then guys, come here, clone it, come here, clone it, come here, clone it, come here. We'll click on the second guy. I'm gonna come down, change it from one to two. Okay, come here, uh, click on this guy, come down, change it from one to three and then come here and change this one from one to four. Another thing I wanna do is just make a quick identifier about what I'm looking at, just to make it visually easier. So let's just add this in here, four. This is completely optional, but hey, it's just a little bit of a design thing, so four. And guys, the other thing to bear in mind is just, just how insane this actual quality is. Like it really is preposterously effective. And like YouTube thumbnails, like that's changed forever now, right? I mean, like you can just imagine use cases, think about, all the children that will want to see themselves as superheroes, or you could literally create all these incredible things now for people with this image gen. I mean, like, I'd be really curious to know down below, actually, in the comment section, what your, like, biggest use case is for this, or where you think the biggest use case for this sort of stuff is going to be. I'm, I'm very, very fascinated to know what you think, because I have, like, a billion ideas. I almost made this, like, 20 videos in one, but I didn't because I was like, yeah, this is just going to be insane otherwise. All right, cool. So what do we do? We click Save. Beautiful. Then guys, I want you to come create a brand new scenario, okay? Now look, in this new scenario, we'll call this one Super Build uh, 2 out of 2. Obviously just give it the same name if you can with some stars. We're gonna type in Airtable. I'm gonna go on uh, Watch Record. So this will trigger automatically as soon as something's happened. Uh, the base we're looking for is Superhero Outreach Build Together. Incredible. And that's pivot in the background. Table is gonna be Table 1. And then it'll pull through all the data fields for us, right? Trigger field's gonna be last modified time, then click OK. Label field, uh, it doesn't really matter, just put URL, then click OK. From now on, it's fine. Then next, then I want to go over to Gmail. What I'm gonna say, guys, is just to create a draft so you can have some audit trail about what you're happy with. Of course, you can just say do this automatically. Uh, if it fails, just basically click on add one more time and refresh and create a new connection and then sign in with Google. And then guys, come back over, add some dummy data to it, select the status as just a for instance. And then we're gonna come back over to the scenario. We're gonna right click on watch records and run this module only. And it's pulled through all this beautiful data. We love it. What I want you to do is right click on this and click on set up a filter, call it approved. And the condition is that status contains case insensitive approved, like so and then click OK. Uh, and what that basically means is the only stuff that's approved will actually ever go through. Then guys, what I want you to do is create your dream draft Gmail, uh, whatever you want that to be. Uh, the one that I created on mine uh, was basically, I'll just copy and paste it for you. I, I used uh, basically Claude to say, hey, here's my email, turn this into HTML, and it did it, which is pretty cool. So uh, basically what we're gonna do, come down to the content, Enter your dream image. Again, I'll, um, I'll put this uh, email thing down below in the description so you can just copy and paste it if you like and just have a bit of fun with it. And then what we're gonna do, guys, it says image URL. What I want you to do is just replace that with this image URL here. But if you wanna add this as an attachment, guys, you only need to add in an, another module and I'll show you how to do that in just a very brief second. So folder I've selected is draft, so obviously you can send it directly if you so choose to. And then in the to field, in the email address, you are going to come down and select where it says the email. Wonderful subject. Uh, the subject that I use is quite cool. And I use this one because somebody sent this to me and it worked on me and it was check out this picture of us. Now, here's the thing. If you have the time, one of the things that you can do is train a model on anybody you want and you can actually have you two hanging out together. And I was like, imagine if someone had done that and it's like, you know, let's say you'd like five clients you're going after and it's just you and that individual, it would have been insane. So check out this picture of us, blah, blah, blah. We got the email. Then we click OK. Now, if you want to send this as an attachment, guys, what you would do is you have HTTP, get a file, the URL on the image URL, uh, which is here, and that will download the file. And then all you do, guys, in the Gmail section here is you come down, you click on Add Attachment, and then basically it will allow you to select this module here, and this module will just sit in between these two here. And that's exactly how that would work, and that would allow you to attach it. Now guys, would you believe it? But you've successfully developed the entire automation. The only thing left to do now is to run the whole thing. So let's run this one once. Let's go over to this guy here. Let's run this one once. Let's go over to Google Chrome and let's just pick a completely different company. So tell me down below, what, what should we go for? Why don't we go for something like 
Should we go for a gem? Let's see if it picks up on the gems. If I just go for Ultra Flex Leads, which is one of the gems that I love to go to, come down to Ultra Flex like so. Let's see if there is an email address on this page. And would you believe, guys, there definitely is. So I'm going to highlight an Ultra Flex, going to right click, and I'm going to click on S to send. Your has been sent successfully. Let's go back over that to Brave Browser. We come over, webhooks. Oh my goodness, it's pulled it through. It's passing the text. Flux prompt is on the go. It is creating us a beautiful image and prompt. And again, guys, have fun with that. Try and create as many different versions as you possibly can and see which one really resonates with you and what you want to do. Now that's happening, we're creating the business overview, which is excellent, and the request is fired off immediately, which means now if I head over to our dashboard here, if we go over to my dashboard, I should see there we go, it's queued. Now, sometimes it's queued, it's based on the volume that we have um, within, you know, within Replicate itself. And obviously, if you haven't seen my last video on Replicate and how to create stuff, I really encourage you to check that out because I cover a lot of cool detail that I think you might find of value in your AI automation journey. Then we've got the sleep module, that's just biding some time until it's complete, and then I'll move on to the rest of the automation. Guys, now it's complete, it's successfully pulled it through, it's uploaded all the images now to Airtable. So if we head over to Airtable, for instance, we've got one, two, three, four. Let's just check them out, shall we? So one, two, three, four. And let's just see what images we've got, for example. So number one, Ultraflex gym. There I am, boom, let's go. And I'm in a gym in a suit. How ridiculous is that? Okay, second one, Ultraflex gym. I've got three hands. Oh my goodness, that's not great. This one here, Ultraflex gym. That's very cool. And then finally, Ultra Flex. So you just pick the one that you want. Maybe you like this one. Are you like, cool? Guys, it's somehow actually also picked up on the fact that it's red. Like, an Ultra Flex is only red. I don't know, that could be pure coincidence, but that is absolutely insane. So what we do here, guys, copy the image or whatever you want, if you want to just save it or send it somewhere. And then basically, guys, in the actual Airtable itself, which is here, we say, do you know what, guys? I'm happy with that. I approve this message. I then come over. But again, obviously, if you just want to go automatically, hit run once, it will check to see if it's approved and it's approved, now it's creating a draft for us and it has sent said draft over. And guys, the emails come through with an image holding a Ultraflex with some information. And guys, I hope you found this video very interesting. The applications for this are literally insane. In any case, have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video.